Hey there, everyone. My name is Ari, and welcome to Made of Metal, a motivational podcast where we tell stories about regular people overcoming insurmountable odds. First and foremost, thank you so much, Stacey Lynn, for the incredible review you left for me on Apple Podcasts. I truly cannot thank you enough for the wonderful feedback. I so appreciate you taking the time to listen to my podcast and then give me your thoughts. I know everyone is super busy. So whenever someone takes the time to leave me a review, I am beyond grateful. So thank you again, Stacey Lynn. You are lovely and appreciated. (laughs) So great to start the podcast off with that sort of energy. I love it. I'm also super excited to share with you guys who we'll be talking about this week. Now, this person is an inspiration, not just for their mental fortitude, but also the sheer physical effort they exerted in order to complete their quest is not to be understated. This person braved circumstances and conditions that would have felled many an experienced adventurer. And they did it all while acting as a political ambassador and mediator between many different groups and cultures a skill that requires more than quite a bit of tact and intelligence. Oh, and by the way, this person also completed this incredible feat while managing being a brand new parent. So you guys already know that I'm beyond fascinated by this person, and that's mainly because I really didn't know the details of their story. While doing my research, I learned a bit more about this person. And the more I learned, the more amazed I was. And I'm sure you guys will be too. So let's get right into it. This week, we'll be covering the pioneer, the pathfinder, the parent, Sacagawea. Sacagawea was born to the Shoshone tribe around 1787 in what is now known as Idaho. Now, you all know that I love and appreciate a unique name, so I wanted to make sure I clarify that there is more than one interpretation of Sacagawea's name, but historically, they've not been able to confirm just one. Her name also has several different meanings, which can be interpreted differently based on the language that is used, which is super cool. When Sacagawea was just a child, She was kidnapped by a neighboring enemy tribe and taken to their nearby camp in North Dakota. Little is known about Sacagawea's early life with her captors until she was sold to a French-Canadian trader named Toussaint Charbonneau, a traveler that had assimilated himself into the Native American lifestyle. Now, just to give you a little historical background, in 1803, a landmark purchase was made that would change the course of Sacagawea's life. The Louisiana Purchase was finalized and President Thomas Jefferson tasked two military men, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, to lead a team to survey and learn about the newly acquired area. The trek measured more than 800,000 square miles, and President Jefferson wanted to learn everything he could about the topography of the landscape, as well as the people who live there, namely the Native Americans. It was this historic assignment that led Lewis and Clark to Sacagawea and her tribe. Around 1804, the team arrived at the camp where Sacagawea lived, with the Hidatsa tribe. They were in desperate need of horses and help in order to navigate towards the Pacific coast. Sacagawea's husband, Charbonneau, was hired by the team as an interpreter for his ability to interpret French and Hidatsa, both languages that were considered essential to communicate. It was after learning that Sacagawea was able to interpret for Charbonneau the missing communication link between the search party and the Shoshone tribe, where they were heading to purchase the required horses. It was at this point that Sacagawea became considered a necessary asset for their survival. And just like that, at just 16 years old, Sacagawea was recruited and heading off into the frontier. And I also wanted to note, 
a fact that is infinitely important and must be highlighted at every point possible in order to fully respect the role that Sacagawea played in securing the success of the search party. And that is when Sacagawea first met Lewis and Clark, she was six months pregnant. Sacagawea gave birth to a healthy baby boy on February 8th, 1805. Less than two months later, Sacagawea, her husband, and the 30 other men with the core discovery, which is what they were calling the search party, including Lewis and Clark, set out on their momentous expedition. Yes, Sacagawea set out on a literal expedition into the unknown after giving birth only a couple months before. And yes, Sacagawea was also expected to care for herself and her newborn baby, as well as the other members of the expedition. The story is already setting out on the tone that I like, you know, in absolute awe and amazement of the incredible strength of women. It's just beyond explanation. A short time within their journey, a little more than a month, Sacagawea already was proving herself to be a savior of the group. While her husband was navigating a boat for the team, they hit an obstacle that caused them to almost completely capsize. While everyone was in a panic, Sacagawea had the sound mind to save and preserve a number of essential supplies, such as medicines and maps. Things that, if lost, surely would have doomed the group to many days and nights of misery and wasted time as they tried to find their way back on track. And again, lest we forget, (laughs) she is caring for her newborn child during this emergency as well. Sacagawea wasn't just their critical support for communication, but she also acted as the ambassador and mediator for the group during a time where foreign explorers were not trusted. Having a Native American woman and child with the group helped project less of an air of danger, lessening the distrust between themselves and other Native American tribes they happened to cross. After finally reaching the Continental Divide, the team discovered the Shoshone camp that they were searching for, and they needed to purchase the horses in order to continue their trek. This would prove to be an even more fruitful destination for Sacagawea. During the introduction, it was discovered that the chief of the Shoshones was Sacagawea's long-lost brother. It was due to their reunion, plus diplomatic talks between Sacagawea and the tribe, that the connection was made and the team was able to complete the transaction to secure the horses. Sacagawea wasn't just invaluable in her ability to communicate. She was able to assist with navigating the group through treacherous terrain, identifying dangerous and edible plants, as well as crafting medicines and fashioning clothing for the other explorers. Just as an example of the many ways in which she'd assisted the group, they were able to continue on their journey through a particularly perilous pass that led them to the Yellowstone River due to Sacagawea's knowledge of the Shoshone trails. Because of Sacagawea's help, they made it to their destination, all the way to the Pacific Ocean, a journey from her camp that was thousands of miles and many, many months. Around the end of the year, in 1805, after arriving at the coast, the group began work on determining where they would build their fort for the winter. Sacagawea had earned her respect from the group and was notably able to vote on the location as an equal. It was decided that the group would build in what is now known as Astoria, Oregon, and Sacagawea, her son and husband, would live there until March 1806. Sacagawea and her family would return home around August 1806, with everyone in the family alive, well, and in one piece. 
Considering how they had just traveled across the country and back, braving the elements without any significant preparation or knowledge of where they were going, this was quite a feat. Lewis and Clark had nothing but praises for Jacko Jawea, and Clark in particular. Clark even had a nickname for her son, who he'd offered his help in obtaining a formal education. A few years after the expedition, the family traveled to Missouri to visit Clark, who had offered the family a lucrative opportunity. In exchange for Clark educating their son, Clark would give Sacagawea and her family land that they could farm. While the farming didn't quite pan out, Sacagawea's son was able to complete his education with Clark while the family looked for work in another expedition. It was on this fateful trip that Sacagawea would give birth to a daughter, but shortly after would become unwell. By December 1812, Sacagawea was considered deathly ill. While little is known as to exactly what she had, it was most likely something along the lines of typhoid fever. Sadly, on December 22, 1812, Sacagawea would pass away from her illness. Sacagawea would be honored by many statues and other natural dedications throughout history in the United States, such as the Sacagawea River, located in Montana, and Mount Sacagawea in Wyoming, one of the highest peaks in the U.S. Sacagawea would also be featured on a coin in the year 2000, similar to the Susan B. Anthony dollar created in similar fashion. I wanted to highlight this as well, as this was another fact of the expedition that I just couldn't quite believe. And that was that Sacagawea, who provided priceless help and support throughout the journey, received absolutely zero compensation for her time, effort, and energy, which may not seem like a big deal, but her husband received a large sum of money along with more than 300 acres of land, which is like, okay, I thought you almost capsized the boat, but okay, (laughs) I guess you get paid all that, but that's all right. The first thing that comes to my mind after reading Sacagawea's story was that I wish people had cared enough to actually document her thoughts. There isn't really much said about Sacagawea and her sort of mind state throughout the journey. Besides like when she was reuniting with her brother, she was visibly excited and happy as anybody would be. But to learn about the inner workings of the mind of someone who has endured that level of stress and strife with a child, no less. I mean, we're talking sickness, environmental factors, shortage of food, shelter, not to mention other groups of people who you don't know. You're not exactly sure what their motives are. Just all the contingencies and inconveniences that come from navigating through an area you are not familiar with. Also, I truly can't imagine she was receiving that much support in the way of taking care of her newborn child. You know, to be able to take care of your newborn child and then take care of everyone else, that is an incredible, incredible burden to put on any one person, but especially somebody as young as Sacagawea. Who was taking care of Sacagawea? That is truly the question that I would like answered. And while we can't know exactly what Sacagawea was thinking and will likely never know, there are some things that we do know. This woman possessed all the qualities of someone that I admire and uphold as a role model. I mean, the grit, sand, and stones on this girl. She was determined. She was intelligent. She was resourceful, persistent. And above all, she was able to persevere, to not just care for herself, but the many people around her that were relying on her. And to be so young and to have such a great responsibility, to have so much maturity. I mean, Sacagawea's story has been highly publicized and fictionalized for political and personal gains during the years, of course. 
the story of the Native Americans helping the Europeans sort of pioneer the land, working together type of narrative that was pushed a lot. But her true story of what really happened, that truly stands the test of time. Sacagawea was a trailblazer, a pioneer, and a mother. All of these titles on their own are singularly impressive. But to tout them all simultaneously, Sacagawea was truly the definition of legendary. So you can check us out at madeofmetalpodcast.com. You can also follow us at Made of Metal Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. And that's Made of Metal, M-E-T-T-L-E. And if you love the show and you'd like to support, please review, rate, subscribe. I want to shout you guys out in the beginning. It helps me set the tone. And I just personally, as I've always said, I love hearing feedback from you guys. It is beyond appreciated. So please do. You can send me a message on my website, on Instagram. If you have a story that you want to share, you know somebody whose story would be really great to feature, please let me know. I want to hear from you guys. (laughs) And as always, my loves, such a pleasure. Thank you so much. And bloom where you are planted.